Here's your first worn weather forecast first. Sponsored by Anderson Collision Center. Visit triveanderson.com. Well, it has been another warm and windy afternoon with a southwesterly wind, 10 to 20 miles per hour in a couple of spots, still gusting 30 to 35. We'll maintain that breeze over the next several hours before wind speeds subside just a bit. Cloud cover increasing here this afternoon thanks to a weaker system that'll pass mostly to the south of us. That kept our temperatures from reaching any further than 70, 71 degrees, but it's been another warm day today. Not quite record warm. That record stands at 78. 70 right now in Rockford. Same thing in Dixon, Sterling, 69 in Freeport. As we go through the rest of this evening, we'll maintain those warm and windy conditions. Mostly cloudy skies overnight. Could see an isolated shower to mostly to the south of us, but the chance for rain and thunderstorms will increase next couple of days. I'll time that out for you in the first warm forecast a little later. Brown County Sheriff's Police make an arrest after a Janesville child is found dead. Officers say the man responsible is related to the eight-year-old victim. Plus, an Illinois survey highlighting people's opinions on the public education system where many taxpayers believe their money should be heading. And Hard Rock provides an update on their construction efforts in Rockford. The local casino's president says their location will feature more than just gambling. Live from WTVO 17, this is Eyewitness News at 5. Good evening, I'm Mimi Murphy. And I'm David Greenberg. Rock County Sheriff Police provide an update after a Janesville child is found dead. Investigators say a person of interest is in custody. Davian Lathrop faces several charges, including first-degree murder, hiding a corpse, and child neglect. Deputies say a little after 6 on Saturday, they responded to a missing child call on West Miles Road in Janesville. They met with family members and searched the neighborhood using a canine unit and drone team. While the search was underway, police detained Lathrop and got a warrant to look through a nearby home. Investigators say they found the child's body inside. According to the sheriff, Lathrop and the child are related. It's an extremely tragic uh, incident that took place. Um, as soon as the law enforcement were called out, we took action on uh, the assumption or the information we had that it was a missing child and we realized it was more. We took the action that was necessary at the time. So there is no more danger to the community. Um, that person is in custody. Lathrop is in the Rock County Jail. Well, tonight, police continue investigating the cause behind a fiery fatal crash involving a school bus and a semi in western Illinois. A crash killing the semi driver, the bus driver, and three young children about 80 miles southwest of Peoria on US 24. Authorities say preliminary information indicates the bus was traveling west on Route 24 when for an unknown reason it crossed into the eastbound lanes in front of that semi causing both vehicles to go up in flames. The Schuyler County Sheriff says with a community this small, the impact will be felt by everyone. As you know, it is all under investigation. So like I say, this county works together. Well, one thing we did have, the uh, local grocery store, hy V brought out sandwiches to the family, etc. So that's what this county is all about. And that's what we're here to do. And all we can do now is pray for those families and we send the best. Illinois State Police are now leading that investigation. Fostering financial freedom and well-being for women across Illinois. That's the goal of the We Thrive initiative. The program was launched by Lieutenant Governor Juliana Stratton back in December. It aims to help women become financially independent through WeChat discussions. The conversations are made up of panels of women who've become financially independent and share the barriers they've had to overcome. The end goal is to create a network of resources designed to help women with their finances. Today was, I think, maybe my sixth or seventh WeChat, and I'll be hosting them all around the state, talking to diverse women about how we can make Illinois the best state in the nation for women and girls, because when women thrive, we all thrive. Stratton also addressed Governor J.B. Pritzker's proposed elimination of the 1% grocery sales tax. She says the governor views the tax as regressive and is standing firm behind his decision. Stratton added that local municipalities are free to decide what they want to do in regards to that tax. Well, the latest inflation numbers project stronger than the month prior. The consumer price index rising 3.2 percent in February from a year earlier. That's up from this January, too. The costs of goods, not including food and energy, slightly improved from January. But economists, they were forecasting even bigger improvements. 
Current inflation at 3.8% is down from its high of 9.1% in 2022, but still far off the Fed's goal of 2%. An Illinois legislative committee will take up a bill meant to crack down on junk fees. They pop up everywhere from rent agreements to concert tickets and airline fees. They're usually added by surprise at the point of sale when you're ready to pay. The proposed bill would merely require providers to list those fees up front so consumers could compare total prices. A new report says a record number of 401k account holders tapped into their savings last year. According to data from Vanguard, over 3.5% of their customers withdrew for financial emergencies. That's up nearly a full percent from the year prior. Nearly half of those 3.6% withdrew to avoid foreclosure. They say Americans have been turning to their 401k accounts as the cost of cars, loans, child care, groceries, credit card and utility bills all rise. A new survey reveals how Illinois residents feel about their public school system. It's the results of the annual report by the Illinois Education Association, which is the largest union in the state. Their survey took the opinions of 1,000 residents two months ago. Nearly three quarters of those surveyed said they believe teaching has gotten more difficult over the past few years. Most people surveyed had higher opinions of their local schools compared to others. They also believe teachers are underpaid and more funding is needed. The public is now showing us through these polls, they want more of an investment in public schools. Just the fact that the data of 80% of public schools being underfunded, when you wanna deliver a high quality education to kids, as we always do, you do need the funding and support to do that. Survey results also found that residents believe that having high quality public schools is more important than balancing the state budget, reforming pensions or job growth. Well, a Hard Rock Casino making some headway towards its expected opening later this year. The president of Rockford's Casino gave us a behind the scenes look at the work so far. Drea Baroni was there for that tour and Drea looks like things are coming together. Yeah, David, Mimi, I got to throw on my neon vest and hard hat and walk through the future casino. Crews are just months away from being done. The $300 million project includes things like more than a thousand slot machines, dozens of table games, three restaurants, and a concert venue. Hard Rock Rockford president Gino Ifray led the tour. He says the casino's not just about betting. You don't have to want to gamble or even like to gamble to enjoy a Hard Rock facility. You know, you can come here and you can go to the lounge at Council Oak and, and catch a little jazz band. You can go see your favorite entertainer in the concert venue. Um, you can eat at one of our, our many restaurants. And then hopefully in the not too distant future, stay in our hotel. Gino says they're actually ahead of schedule and we'll start to see some of those gaming tables and slot machines coming into the building mid-June. Heart Rock still set to open around Labor Day weekend. I'll have more from Gino and a look inside the building coming up later at 6. That's Amy. exciting stuff, Trey. Thanks. The former special counsel of President Biden's classified documents case is grilled by both sides of the aisle. Up next, he claims politics played no part in the decision to not prosecute the president. Coming up at 6, Rockford police search for a suspect on the run. Officers say he's the third man to be charged in the deadly shooting in downtown Rockford. Temperatures made it back up to the 70s this afternoon. Not quite record warmth, but we hold on to that warmth at least for one more day. Then things look to take a little bit of a turn to, towards cooler weather. Find out if that'll carry over for the rest of March. Coming up here on the First Warm Forecast a little later. Well, for hours, former special counsel Robert Hur faced questions from Congress over his report on President Biden's handling of classified documents. Hur declined to prosecute Biden, but did question his mental sharpness. He's now being criticized by both Republicans and Democrats. Perry Russom has the latest from Washington. Today, former special counsel Robert Hur defending his investigation into President Biden's handling of classified documents and explaining why he declined to prosecute the president. The, the report is not an exon exoneration. That word does not appear in my report. In Hur's report released last month, he describes the president as a sympathetic, well-meaning elderly man with a poor memory. I could have written my report theoretically in a way that omitted references to the president's memory, but that would have been an incomplete and improper report. In Hur's 345-page report, he writes Biden did not remember even within several years when his son Bo died, causing this fiery response from the president. How in the hell dare he raise that? 
In the Biden her interview transcripts released today, it reads Biden asks, What month did Bo die? Oh God, May 30th. White House counsel Rachel Cotton replying, 2015. An unidentified male speaker says 2015. Biden asks, Was it 2015 he had died? Today, her facing criticism from Democrats for characterizing the president's mental sharpness in his report. You used your report to trash and smear President Biden. And from Republicans for not prosecuting the president. All I have to do when I'm caught taking home uh, classified materials to say, I I'm sorry, Mr. Herbert, but I'm getting old. My memory's not so great. Does the fact that you're Republican, does that stop you from a thorough and fair investigation? No, partisan politics had nothing to do with the work that I did or the report that I wrote or the decision that I reached. While Biden is not facing criminal charges for his handling of classified documents, former President Trump is 40 criminal counts brought by special counsel Jack Smith. Trump denies any wrongdoing. Perry Russom, ABC News, Washington. Oh, we had a breezy day across the state line. Yeah, it was nice to get outside for a bit. After the break, Ken is telling us about our chances for the storms in the coming days. Your first worn weather forecast from Chief Meteorologist Candace King. Well, our winds have been a little on the gustier side here for much of this afternoon, just like they were yesterday. But the wind speeds will come down, still dealing with a 30 mile power wind gust here in Rockford, 26 in Sterling, 21 in DeKalb, and 26 right now in Rochelle. Sustained winds from the southwest, 10 to 20 miles per hour. That wind again will stay with us through this evening, subsiding just a little bit here as we go through the night. But the southerly wind, even with the increase in cloud cover, allowed our temperatures to once again make it up to 70. We're right at 70 here in Rockford, 69 in Freeport, 70 in Rochelle and Sterling, same thing in Dixon, 67 in Poplar Grove and up to 70 right now in Janesville, 71 for our weather watcher Terry in Genoa, southwesterly wind at 19 miles per hour, overcast sky, but some filtered sunshine for Mike down in Forest and current temperature sits at 68 and Sandy down in the Kirkland Fairdale area, gusty southwesterly wind, current temperature there in northern DeKalb County sitting at 69 degrees, relative humidity at 30 38%. We've got the cloud cover that stays with us here tonight and from that we may see a very isolated shower or thunderstorm primarily to the south. That is tied into this area of low pressure that is now working through Kansas City. You can see some showers starting to develop along that from the Kansas-Missouri border. Now most of that activity is actually going to stay focused to the south but what's really neat with this and what I love to show is water vapor imagery. Remember, this gives us kind of a snapshot of what is going on in the middle part of the atmosphere. It shows us where we have dry air, where we have moisture, and where we have these low pressure systems. And you can point out, too, where we've got that low, that curly Q spin now working through the plains, and that moisture coming up ahead of that. So that's system number one. Next one, moving in here to the Pacific Northwest, this deepening low pressure system, which will eventually drive what we see here going into the afternoon and evening tomorrow and then again into Thursday. And some of those thunderstorms for some could be on the strong to severe side, but it really all depends on one, where that low pressure system sits and two, where that cold front ends up that's coming through for tonight. Now, there is a cold front moving through tonight. All that is likely going to do is really just shift our wind from the southwest to the northeast for tomorrow. Temperatures are still likely to make it into the 60s underneath a partly sunny sky. Now, there's about a 10 to 20 percent chance we have an isolated shower thunderstorm kind of pop up tomorrow afternoon, but a better chance will come in overnight Wednesday into Thursday, and there could be some heavy downpours and maybe even some hail potential with with any of those showers and thunderstorms that form. What we'll be watching is exactly where that warm front sets up then into Thursday late afternoon and evening. Notice with this we keep an easterly wind which would keep our temperatures in the 40s at most in the 50s. South of that warm front, you've got the 60s and the 70s. If we see that front lift a little further to the north, well, then that will increase our chance for severe thunderstorms, or at least the likelihood of that, once we get into Thursday afternoon and Thursday evening. So because of that, that risk has been added for most of the area, although slightly higher southwest of Rockford, kind of closer to where that warm front sits. So something we'll have to keep an eye on going into Thursday. 
Thursday. 53 degrees Thursday afternoon, 50 on Friday. A couple of cold fronts come in. Guys, and even have a flurry or two Sunday into Monday. Yeah, I can't believe it was 70 out there. We're talking flurries <laughs> once again. Candace, thanks. We're in the Midwest. That's right. Scott's in next with sports. There's been a lot more player movement in the NFL today. One move involved a Rockford native. And the Packers will still be seeing quite a bit of Aaron Jones next season, even though he's no longer going to be with the team. Now sports with sports director Scott Lever. When NFL free agency time hits, there are players looking to sign big deals, and there are others who become salary cap casualties. Well, Rockford native Dean Lowry falls under the second category. The Minnesota Vikings terminated the final year of Lowry's contract today, making him a free agent once again. And by making that move, the Vikings will save just over $2 million in salary cap space. Just last year, Lowry signed a two-year free agent deal with the Vikings for $8.5 million. He didn't have much of a chance to make an impact in purple. A pectoral injury ended his season after only nine games. So Lowry again is looking for a new team, or perhaps he'll decide eight NFL seasons are enough. Some of that money the Vikings saved by releasing Lowry is going toward Aaron Jones. The former Packers running back is headed to Minnesota, agreeing to a one-year contract worth $7 million. As if seeing Jones let go yesterday wasn't painful enough for Packers fans, now they have to deal with this. You think he'll be amped for those two games against the Pack? The Vikings also have a new quarterback who could replace Kirk Cousins. They have a deal with the well-traveled Sam Darnold. He played in parts of 10 games with the 49ers last season and started one. Darnold isn't the long-term answer in Minnesota, certainly, but he could get them through a year or two until they find their QB of the future. The Bears have a deal with former Chargers tight end Gerald Everett. He caught 51 passes last season. And former Bears receiver Darnell Mooney is headed to the Falcons. And the latest Justin Fields speculation has the Eagles interested in Fields as a backup if they can get him cheap from the Bears. Well, the Ice Hogs go after their seventh straight win tonight in Texas. No Ice Hogs team has had a seven-game winning streak since the 2014-15 season. This is the first of two games in two nights for the Hogs in Texas. They currently trail the Stars for third place in the division race by only two points. We move along to the number three seed and another undefeated team in this tournament. It is Rock Valley. Well, the Rock Valley College women's basketball team learned this afternoon that it is the number three seed for next week's Junior College D2 National Tournament. The Golden Eagles are 33-0, so they're very deserving of that number three seed. They'll head to Joplin, Missouri for the tournament next week. We're going to hear from some of the players and Coach Watkins at 6 o'clock. At Sports, we'll be right back. Well, as per how it's been this time of year, we've seen the 70s, and we're mm -hmm. going back to maybe even some yeah. snow coming up. <laughs> it happens, right? You know, when we have uh, the potential for some snow. Actually, I was at my dentist's office this morning. He said, oh, you think we got any more snow coming up? I'm like, yeah, at least one more. Oh, no. Probably. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. But I hope that was after the appointment, though, not before. Well, you know, they, they like to talk when they're, you know, cleaning <laughs> yeah. their Yeah, well, there you go. So in the middle. <laughs> Whatever he was able to decipher from that. Um, temperatures tonight are in the 40s. Tomorrow, we're back up into the 60s, but we've got some cloud cover. We've got some rain showers too, and even some thunderstorms. You can follow it all with the First Warren Interactive Radar brought to us by Rockford Auto Glass and more. 67 for tomorrow, 53 though on Thursday. Thursday is the day to watch. Right now, I think the greatest threat for severe weather maybe just outside of the area, but something we'll keep an eye on 40s by next week. Thanks, Candace. We'll see you back here at 6.